Welcome, everybody, to the Fitbit CPA podcast, episode number 607. On today's podcast, we've got Mr. Lawrence Martin. Lawrence is with Nexo Mortgage. He's a mortgage broker, and he will share with us his background, his history, what brought him into the mortgage industry, and what differentiates him from the marketplace. Lawrence, take it away. How's everybody doing today? As he mentioned before, I am Lawrence Martin, mortgage broker with Nexo Mortgage, author of the book, Who Gives the FICO? And we'll be talking a little bit about myself, my background, some products that are on the market today that you can use to elevate your investment portfolio and just really overall what's the market uh, doing now and the future where we're going to be heading as it relates to the marketplace. Right. So first of all, how did I get into mortgages? A lot of people commonly ask that question. So my wife and I, we both bought our second home in about 2015. At the time, prior to that, we were preparing because we were making a transition. The family was growing. Uh, we were on our third child. And what ended up happening, you know, mortgage lenders start running my credit. My credit wasn't where I wanted it to be. It wasn't so bad that we couldn't get approved, but it, where, it wasn't where I wanted it to be. So I started doing some research, working on my credit. And what ended up happening, I got all this knowledge that uh, obviously, we weren't taught in school, but really, the credit game is really a legal matter more than it is you owe the debt or not. You know, so long story short, I started doing helping people with their credit. Started a credit repair company, and it was suggested to me by a realtor to go ahead and get my real uh, get my mortgage broker's license. And once I did that, you know, the world opened up to me as it relates to credit on the mortgage side, the consumer side as well. In 2019, I wrote the book, Who Gives a FICO? My main objective was to educate people in this area because I feel like there's a deficiency uh, in our culture as it relates to education on topics such as credit and financing and budgeting and things of that nature. So just wanted to write the book on credit, give people an out view on how credit works, what the purpose of credit is, and some of the secrets of the FICO score so they can raise their scores if they ever get in the crunch or they need to understand how credit works as it is so. And Lawrence, you mentioned you became a mortgage broker because a realtor encouraged you to get your mortgage broker license. What year did you become a mortgage broker? Was it was it during the recession or, or what? when did you get that? So I started the process in 2017. Gotcha. I officially got the license in 2018. So Very nice. Going on moving forward going on about five years uh so pretty soon we'll meet, reach, that, reach that five year mark the whole idea and the whole goal for me was to you know get the experience as a mortgage broker working with first-time home buyers working with investors just to add to my education and knowledge of how things work in the industry it's a great industry to be a part of obviously last year was great for a lot of companies this year we're Definitely having challenges as it relates to the interest rates going up, buyers being exhausted from the fact that um, homes are still going up. So the main thing is we're just here to serve people and, and work with them and help them get into homes. And tell me about that. You talked about your clientele, first-time home buyers. Who are your primary clientele right now? So my primary clientele, first-time home buyers, also investors. And I work with a lot of investors as well people who want to build their portfolio. We have great products for investors. Even in a market like this, investors are still buying up homes because they know the value of home ownership, securing the property and the equity going up, they can use that and leverage that at some point. So basically we're working with first time home buyers and investors. And uh, you know we'll have some move down buyers or people who are relocating and doing things of that nature. So but yeah, mainly first time home buyers and investors. I love that because first time home buyers and uh, investors, they need a lot of help. They need a lot of hand holding. They can't do it all by themselves. They need somebody who's a CPA, but also they need a mortgage broker to get the property that they, that, that they want. And um, talking about these type of clients, we also touched on HELOCs. So could you tell me a little yeah. bit more about the HELOC loan and, and what it okay. is and how it can help? Yeah, great question. So the HELOC is, 
it's for primary residents in most cases. Most lenders won't lend a HELOC on an investment property. You have to do a cash out. So last year, we experienced a refi boom where people were doing cash out refinances and also rate and term refinances because the rates were so low. So these people had a 5% interest rate. They can get a rate term interest rate for 2 or 3%. They don't have to worry about refinancing ever again, right? Or they, if they had equity in their home, they could cash out that equity at 3%. So the people that missed that wave of low interest rates or the people that did a rate and term but didn't take advantage of the cash out refinance that tap into their equity, now lenders are bringing on board the HELOC loan. You know, most of this, this actual product was, um, it was popular amongst the, um, the banks and the credit unions, but more brokers, more um, wholesale lenders are bringing this on uh, as a product that they're selling to the, um, to the masses now. So to answer your question, what is a HELOC? HELOC is a home equity line of credit. It acts like a credit card, you know, with the revolving account, mm -hmm. similar to a credit card, but it does have a term of 20 to 30 years, okay? okay. So we, you can definitely get a, a HELOC for 20 years or even 10 years, okay? Uh, but if you, once you pay it off, you can reuse it again and pay it off, reuse it again. Uh, that's the great thing about the HELOC. Uh, what people use it for is to really tap into the equity in their home they don't want to test the first lien, right, with the uh, low interest rate. So we have a first lien position, and then the HELOC is going to be in the second lien position, meaning that uh, the HELOC company, whoever's setting up the HELOC, is going to have the second lien position to that particular property, while uh, the borrower actually borrows against that home uh, and using the equity for you know, uh -huh. things like repairs on the home or even investing. So HELOC is a great product, especially when it as it relates to people tapping into their equity, using that equity for purposes of investing or even fixing up their home. So you don't say. So have you had clients that have used HELOC for investing in properties, buying real estate just to create that cash flow? Not not a whole lot at this time, but they're gearing up to it because the HELOC, like I say, it's fairly new. It's not really a mainstream thing. The only mm -hmm. reason why people are taking notice of a HELOC because they don't want to touch the first lien position of their home. They don't want to touch their first mortgage. So they would rather tap, tap into the equity using a HELOC and not refinancing the first mortgage. Uh, like a, a, say a cash out refinance where they can use all of the equity in the home and cash out or refinance the first mortgage. But they don't want to touch the first mortgage. So They'll look to a HELOC, which is a great product for them to use to invest or, you know, yeah. possibly buy some Airbnbs, things of that nature. Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought up the credit line of credits and the credit cards. And they usually have a much higher interest rates, right? 20, 25% right. versus a HELOC, which you said is around 7 to 10%. Is, 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 is that right? Right, right. Exactly. Just really depends on the market. But we're seeing HELOCs, they really... Can range anywhere from 10 to 12 at this point. Got it. Now we talked about the positives of HELOC. You know, we got to talk about the downfalls and and, right. and, the, and who this is not right for and who this is right for. Could you touch so on that? The HELOC is, is definitely going to check the debt to income ratio because it, it is another loan added to uh, your first mortgage. So if your first mortgage is $1,200, your HELOC may be five hundred. That's seventeen hundred dollars of monthly uh, obligation that you would have to take care of every oh, wow. month. So, so the downside is it does add more debt to your plate as a consumer, and you just got to have either you know an investment covering that debt or just making sure you can cover it out of the money that you're making from your paycheck. But one of the, yeah, that is a downside that. It is dead and it does compound the longer you take to pay it off. Got it. Got it. Well, thank you for sharing that, Lawrence. Any other advice you have for first time home buyers in this economy, especially with the Federal Reserve keeps jacking up those rates? What advice do you have for first time home buyers? 
I will advise first time home buyers to get prepared no matter what the market is doing. First time home buyers have to pay attention to their own budget to make sure they're ready to buy a home and not worry about what's going on in the market. Because there's never a, an ideal time to rent other than for temporary purposes, okay? Rent is really, in my opinion, is not for long-term. So you always want to look into getting a, getting a home. So if your family is expanding, obviously that will be a great time to buy a home if you're renting, right? So it's priority would be the lifestyle first, okay? Even though the rates are higher, even though homes may be a little bit more expensive, the lifestyle is the priority of it all. So people need yeah. to- Yeah, like you mentioned- like yeah. you mentioned, it's great for first-time home buyers, but also if you're an investor, if you're a young person, single, looking to invest in real estate, this is right. the time to do it. And and no better right. way than to get in touch with Lawrence, who can help you understand and educate you on how to get that mortgage for the investment property. Absolutely. Absolutely. So a lot of young people, they don't believe they can buy a home. They don't believe that they're ready to buy a home. But long-term, if they invest now, it would you know, pay back dividends uh, in the future. So we just got to make sure we encourage young people uh, if they're ready or even, you know, investment groups, they can join investment groups and start investing in real estate. Right. The funds add up, the funds that they save, and, and it'll add up in, in the long run. Yeah, it's the number one way to get wealthy in America today. It's real estate yes. is the American dream. I, I, I don't care oh, yeah. if, if we live in this new technology, new age world, Real estate right. is the best way to get wealthy. Tax deductions, HELOC, right. points, deductions. It's deductions on top of deductions. It's the end game is right. there. Exactly. That's that's the game of Monopoly, right? Where, <laughs> the game of Monopoly is to buy as much real estate as possible. That's right? it. So, that's it. So that's the game. And the ideal, the reason why people say that real estate is a, a huge portion of the American dream is because you get to own a piece of, of America. You get to own a piece of this corporation we call America. The United right. States is a corporation. So when you own a piece of the corporation, the corporation gives you incentives because you're a part of, you're part of the ownership of this, of this corporation we call America. So they're gonna give you incentives because you're a part of the, the company. You're right? a shareholder. People that are on the outside, right. people on the outside that don't own real estate, they're not going to get those tax write-offs. They're not going to get the depreciation, the appreciation, the, you know, some of the deductions for repairs and all those things because they don't right. own. Same thing goes into entrepreneurship. When you own a company, you still own a part of America because you're going to get incentivized for yeah. owning a company. So those are a point, good bullet points about uh, the American dream and why is so important to have ownership. That is the dream. The dream is we get to own a part of a, co a country. Right. And that's not true in most cases, right? Like people don't think about it that way, but we own a part of the country we, it collectively. So even if we're paying into the tax system, still- There are I mean, loopholes. We're right? benefiting. We're, there are loopholes. But right. even in that, there there is- a benefit for us paying taxes, you know, because we have roads, we have uh, federal programs that we all benefit from. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we could look at it from a negative standpoint that they're taking our money, or a positive standpoint that, you know what, we're building together. There, there are certain benefits that we're all going to have by us paying into this, uh, this system, this ecosystem we call America. Right. We're a big family. We got to contribute. Exactly. And that's how the family grows. Exactly. Family gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then everybody prospers. Everybody finally, prospers. Exactly. Fi finally, Lawrence, where can people find you, reach out to you, buy your book? What's What are the links that people need to reach out? Yeah, so if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can follow me at Lawrence at the Mortgage Broker on Instagram and Facebook on the official Lawrence Market. Find out a book on Amazon at uh, Who Gives a Fighter is the name of the book. So you look up Who Gives a Fighter and you And we're going to put the links down below. Everybody, please go out, buy Lawrence's book. It's awesome. Yeah. I've read it. 